finding Mordo. Um, I just put a picture of Mordo here, and who found it? <laughs> okay, not so much. And when you search for Mordo in the picture, do you just look around randomly, or do you follow a specific path to find it? Okay, so of course you can just look around the picture and jump from here to here or here or whatever, but there is also a specific or optimal search strategy for finding water. So there was a professor which um, analyzed all water pictures and found an optimal path where you can find water. So basically if you start here and go up, go up here and then you go here, and then up, up to here, because Waldo is never here, never. And in this case, he's here. So, and basically, it is the same like finding memory in Swiss Oregon. You can look at different areas, and you can spot here and spot there, but if you have a strategy how to find memory leaks in Oregon, you will be much faster and more efficient. And this is what this talk about. Um, just a word about me. I'm an independent organ performance consultant and researcher, and I'm doing this since 2011. Yeah, and mainly I'm doing internal stuff for clients on short contracting basis, so you can book me by hour or by day. <laughs> and all my talk slides and all the demo scripts that I will use are on my website, so you, it's already uploaded, so you can go on the website and download it afterwards, and can run it on your own environment. So it's fully predictable and repeatable, what we do up today. Okay, so where is Waldo? Um, this is a real client case, when a client called me, and basically what they did, they did an Oracle upgrade from 10.205 to 12.102. And they did some regression tests after the upgrade, and what they did, they used JMeter, because it was, um, a thick database application, so the application itself was written in PL SQL and running on the database. And the UI was um, programmed on Apache Tomcat and some Java stuff. And what they did, they used Gmeter to run some load tests on Apache, and the Apache connected to the database with a connection tool, JDBC connection tool. And based on the application logic, sometimes the database also calls some web services in the internet. It was a broker application and they needed these web services to get the actual exchange rates and so on. And when they run this load test on this old environment with 10.205, it pretty worked fine, never get an error. And after they upgraded to 12.102, after, let's say, two hours or something like that, they got more over here. So they get an aura of 50.36. And nobody knows why it occurred. It was just after the day of the upgrade. And they thought that maybe a memory leak because they did not change the application at all, but they wanted to. And today we will exactly rebuild this environment on my laptop and try to figure out where the memory leak is. Just a little information, I have all the references on my slides, which scripts I will use today. Uh, and you can download it on my laptop, I've already there. Okay, so let's start with the demo. So, the first thing is when you get such an aura uh, error, what do you usually do? That's the first or I could start in meta. Google, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that, exactly. And um, maybe you found also on my blog post about it. But you can also do something like this because if it's not a known error, the first thing I do usually is I use all error. To get information about the error itself. And in this case, it says a PG memory used by the instance exceeds PGA aggregate limit. This was a new feature with 12.1, and you can set this, set this parameter, and then the PGA is not allowed to grow more than what you have set in this parameter. It's not exactly true, as Fritz demonstrated on his blog post, because this limit is not also not forced, because you can have a little bit more memory after uh, before it kicks in. But in this case, the client hits this limit and set, and PGA memory was too big. So, okay, we know that it's already about PGA memory. And what I will do now in my test environment, I will deploy the PLC for application code. 
and then we will run it so that we can get this memory in the book. Okay, so what I do with my demo here, it's nothing really fancy. I just drop a user test, create the user again, do some uh, permission stuff, then I connect to the user, create a table, a simple table for DBA objects, so also not really fancy, get the statistics, <coughs> and then because I want to call some web server on my laptop, I create an ACL, uh, so that I'm allowed to do HTTP requests, and then I deploy some application code, it's also not really complex. I just create a package with a procedure, and I will call this URL several times then. And here I usually you have here more fancy application code like application logic. I just have here a select for demonstration purpose. Then I use this HTTP uh, request stuff, and finally afterwards I do <coughs> some more select stuff, and usually here all the more fancy application code. So that's all about the applications that I will run on the database, and to model uh, the client environment completely, oh, sorry. I also have a um, cell application, also not being really fancy, it just connects to the database, and it runs this PLC code procedure. So, also nothing really complex, and so let's do it. Now I have modeled the case that the client has done with Genius. And now you already know that you have a problem with the PGA. Mm -hmm. What do you do now? If you know the PGA is a problem, how do you start to analyze it? What do you usually do? And the the there are the processes and the information of the part of the client where the problem is. We got a process? Okay. It's kind of like a session history. I call that. Okay. Okay. Great. So these the three options where you usually uh, usually start to get a little bit more information about it. Snapper. Sorry? Snapper. Yeah, you can also use Snapper because but if you don't know which session has a problem or which session is a root cause, I mean you can run Snapper on all sessions, but the output is pretty basic, you know. And if you just use VDLA process for example or VDLA uh, session statistics, uh, you can get the output a little bit less. Uh, uh, I do not try. So that's what we're doing right now. <coughs> so I connect. And the first thing I do is in the first query, I use VDOLA session and VDOLA process, and I'm showing it on the address so I get a little bit more information about the session ID. And you have the calling. PGA use memory and PGA allocate memory, and also some readable memory stuff. And the second query I run is on VDLA uh, session statistics to get this information. And when we run this query now several times, you see, for example, that the PGA used memory drops here, right? Um, so it's based on a feature which is called uh, real free uh, deep memory management from Oracle, it was introduced with Oracle 9i. So Oracle is able to free some memory even if the session is not closed. So you do not see the uh, value increasing every time, but if we run this query several times, five, six, nine, you see, even if the freeable memory is already given back to the operating system, the memory increases and increases. And we can run it even more. So do you use automatic memory management or uh, ASLM? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, ah, so okay. SG, okay, SG. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter, the problem is not about memory management, mm -hmm. the problem is in order to come with that. In this case. So, Okay, so if you run this query, you can see that the memory freezes and increases until you hit basically the limit. 
Now when the memory is free, you're already at by 6 MB and we started by 5 MB. So, okay, you know that the PGA increases and increases and you can also see it here. What is the next step that we do? The PGA is up. Yeah. Really. Yeah, that's that. But you also you want to drill down even more in detail, right? I want to say what has been the selling point as well. Okay. You use the snapper, okay? Or the debug directly. Yeah, you can also start with already debug right there and look at deep jumps or something like that. We can use the trace uh, one double O forty six. You can use or uh, go to the operating system like D-Trace or Tail to see exactly where uh, <laughs> yeah. You can also go down, but let's make, make it a little bit more systematic. We just right now know that the PGA increases and we have also the proof that it is doing it here with the session. And we, now we want to get a breakdown from this PGA memory usage. So we want to see if it's SQL based or PL SQL based or whatever. So there's another view which you can use. I will run it several times. So it's V dollar process underscore memory here. And with this view, you get a little bit more detailed information about the PGA breakdown. So this is still the PGA, and you have four categories, Freeable, other field SQL, and SQL. I'm sorry that I break me up. Could you please move that banner? Because it's ah, sure. like a yeah, it's about the cloud, I have to read it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now we can do the real thing. Uh, okay, so you have four categories, freeable, other, PL SQL, and SQL. Well, SQL is pretty logical, it's about work areas and hash points or whatever. PL SQL stuff, well, it's about PL SQL. And others, it's others, right? <laughs> and freeable means uh, this, is, uh, this memory, which is uh, shown in the allocated column, is um, able to get back to the OS if or if it's needed. And if we run it once more, set of times, you see the other increases and increases. Right? Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes it decreases. Sorry? Sometimes it decreases. Well, yeah, but it's just the same line because it's free. <laughs> so sometimes, but if you run it over time, if you monitor it, you will see that it will increase. Um, so we will need to analyze the other category in this case. And how can you get a more uh, drilled down into this category? What do you usually do? I know for Aviva, we will do that mm -hmm. later on. But you can also get more information from Ori itself without Ori Aviva or operating system tools. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there is another view. I will explain what I do right now later. So there's a few regional process memory, underscore memory, underscore detail, where you get a little bit more breakdown of these different categories. And if you just select from the regional process uh, view, the first thing is that you get no row selected. <laughs> uh, why? Because this view needs to be populated by this process or by this session. And default, by default, it's not populated. And as I run into SQL in a different session, it is not allowed to look into the other the heap memory of the session. So this session needs to populate, populate it. And there is an aura debug command for it. And that's the reason why I entered here the PID from a lot. It's 46. Aura debug set market. And then I say to this process, please populate the details in the dollar process memory details. And when I have done that, I will get something like this. Let's go up. So, and in this case, you can see the category once again, and you can see also the allocation, memory allocation reasons. In this case, T, C, uh, case, uh, Z, X, A, S, C, put, whatever it is. And you can also see from which heap it is allocated how much bytes and the allocation count. That's basically how much chunks are allocated. And that's basically 
the lowest levels that you can get from Oracle about this stuff. Okay. Um, basically, this process uh, which I used with Oracle Debug PGA PGA get uh, only populates this view when it gets active. But as my process is running and running the application, it always is active. So don't be confused when it's not populated immediately. It only gets populated on the next database. So, okay, we know that when we run this several times again, we will see that this memory allocation region is increasing and increasing. So, what is this? <laughs> it's critical, right? Okay, so how do we get more information about this stuff? Then we are at Ola Lima, for example. It's pretty useful in this case because if you don't know what this cryptical stuff means, um, in most cases it has something in the brackets. So you know everything that starts with kcx and uh, kzx, sorry, has something to do with xs, whatever it is. Right? And if it starts with kzxa, it has something to do with xs acl. And in our application case, we are using acl because I do web calls and so on. So that's one way you can do it to get a little bit more information. But there's also another great tool by Chris Hoogler, who is in the back. And he basically built a database, or created a database and still maintains it, where he puts all the information about C function calls and prefixes and stuff and so on. And in this case, it only includes the stuff from Aura Deeper. But in most of the other cases, or in several other cases, it has all the more detailed information about this. And we will use this tool later on to get a little bit more information about other stuff. So we fill it out even more. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And now we'll get to our debug to down from heat. Um, we fill it down from the Oracle perspective, and now let's do the heat pumps to get a little bit more information about the allocation. Who of you have already worked with Oral Debug and Dump Heat? Okay, four. Okay, it's not so much. Okay. So, at first, I gather some information. I use the OS pit to get some information about the. This is. Uh, 23. So I get some information about the session. And what I read right now is a um, OS bit from the server, so basically from the child process. So, and what I will do now right here is that I set OS bit to this um, process ID. I use all debug to get the trace file name, and then I will dump now the PGA, right? with level one, and when I add this level number here, I do not get only the top level heats, but also uh, two levels of uh, recurs recursion. So this basically means I get the top heat, the sub heat, and another sub heat. And now let's have a look at the trace file. There is a trace file analyzer by Tango Collar, which you can use to have a first look at this dump, which summarizes basically. picture like what Oracle uh, populated this view. You can see the allocation reason, reason, which is a little bit cut, and you can see from the heat and the total size, which basically matches the size from the suite or our process detail view. But what you all can see is the chunk size. That was that was missing in the in the other view. So each allocation of this for this reason is 80 bytes. And we will look right now into this heat dump as well to check this. Just for demonstration purposes. And let's search for this reason. Mm -hmm. 
So here you can see the heat map, that was also what you had seen in this view and uh, from the standard policy uh, tool. And you can see the here this reason why this memory is allocated and see that each allocation is 80 bytes. And you can also see the memory chunk mm -hmm. And all allocations are 80 bytes. So there is no skew in memory allocation. Every request is 80 bytes. And there's a little detail if you look really closely. Um, you can see that this heap where this memory is allocated from is just a subheap because it has a um, parent memory heap right here. So if you search for this memory address in this dump, for example, you will find that this memory, this, the subheap, is stored in a heap which is called session heap. And the session heap is still not the, the main heap because it has another parent heap. So it's this memory address. And if you look at this memory address, you will find that it is stored in the UGA and not in the PGA. Well, this change was also introduced with uh, the real free memory management with Oregon and I because if you store it not in the PGA directly as a sub heap, but in the, uh, the UGA as a, a parent heap, you can freeze this memory stuff pretty easily. Yep. And yeah, that's just the information about it. It's more than that. <laughs> okay, so that's about the heap stuff. And now we know why Oracle allocates the memory for basically the reason, but we don't know what or who allocates it. Right? We have, uh, we have a complex application, and we don't know which call, if you SQL call, SQL search statement, or whatever, allocates the memory. So we can use one again, or a debug, to get a little bit more information. The reason the TXT is yeah. Ah, sorry. TXT. Because there are functions. Oracle is just a C program, and if it's it needs to allocate memory, it has to do it via some C function. And there are C functions which start with uh, K K H, and which are K H K H memory allocate. And Oracle debug does not give more information about this C function, but as I told you, Fritz has a database, and if you check this database, you get a little bit more information. Yeah. Right? Each function which starts with uh, KDH is about the heap manager, and there are several C functions which allocate memory, different memory parts or different um, reasons. And in this case, we have KHKALF, which allocates uh, non recoverable pre changed memory, KHKALO, which is a main allocation entry point, and KHKALF, which calls allocate permanent memory. So when we know that these C functions are used to allocate memory, we can profile them with some. Uh, operating system tool. And I will use now Heatrate as this is all running on Solaris. But as I already mentioned, I have this in the slide, this reference section, um, Mohammed also ported my script, which, which stays on Heatrace, to Linux with system tab or with an error stack approach. So if you're running Oracle database on Linux, you can still use my approach to, to find this memory leaks. But on Linux, you have to use a script by one and a half. You can download it from here, so it's all free. OK, so let's check how we can do it. So the heatrate script, it's nothing really fancy, right? It just captures the entry point of the C function, KHDO. KHDLP and KHDL, and it basically prints out several arguments which are put in this function. In this case, for these two functions, it uses argument 1 and argument 5, and for this function, it's argument 1 and argument 8. And then it pr just prints out this information. So let's do it once again. So 
So this is my operating system process. And now when I will attach with the script, which is written by Carl Potter, to this process, and let's check the memory allocation. More than enough. And now let's search for this reason. And without it, it was something like this. So, here. So, you can see the sysc function was called. It allocates memory from sysc, and because of this reason. And if we know that now Oracle allocates memory due to this function, we can stop at the C function and shall say Oracle stop here and dump me some information what you are doing exactly at this point of time when you allocate this memory. So it's possible with also with OS tools and we can do this all with C So what we will do right now is uh, we will use a script that I have written, which is partly based on handle problem script. <coughs> And the script has three input parameters. Of course, the session uh, the process ID, which C function I want to break on, so maybe it's a three one, and the allocation reason. In our case, it's kdx is put. And what it does is, based on the function that I passed in, it uses the specific arguments, and then it probes on uh, the entry of the C function. And when this, um, this memory allocation reason is what I passed in, it will stop the process. It is not fully I cannot see it. Here, stop. So it stops the process. And then I can do something with Oracle to dump more information about what it is doing ex exactly at this point in time. And then we exactly know which code line is allocated to memory. So let's do it. And as we know, this memory is allocated due to the C function. I pass it to the C function and the memory allocation reason. And now what my script is done, it, it already tells you what to do next. Right? It says it stops. Um, please run the following command in a separate C++ session. So just do it what it says. So we we'll connect to the database. And do for an event and attach to this process that I stopped right now and will dump an error state. So, of course, the command hangs because I stopped the process, but I can continue it with vrun and then it goes through and it will dump exactly at this point in time when it allocates the memory. So let's have a look at the straight file. Okay, I will go up in a few seconds. But at first, let, let's look at the call stack trace, which is the information about the C function, what I call. And we are here. This is the C function which we stopped, and this is the last function of this call stack. Everything else is based on the oral debug stuff, and so we know that we captured exactly the point in time that we wanted to capture. And you also can see the different C functions which lead to this memory allocation here. And as we already know, it has to do something with ACLs. You can see here, for example, it abbreviates some ACLs, it gets the ACL, and then it has to put something, and then it allocates the memory. So. So with, when you're checking the C call stack, you can be absolutely sure that we capture the um, right point in time. And now let's have a look a little bit in the header. You also get a PLC for a call stack. And of course, it co it's an anonymous block because I, because I call it via um, JDC, connection tooling. And I call my package. 
and my package calls something different. In this case, some code from Oracle. And at the last line, so this basically is a call that requested some memory. So let's have a look at this code. I will do it with C code developer because it's easier. My user for my C when user test and this package in line 12. So let's check it. Packages, body, and line 12. So this is a line which calls the other calls, and this is definitely the Oracle code, right? Because it calls UTL HTTP to get requests. So the memory leak is not in my PLC code, it has to be something with Oracle. So let's go a little bit deeper and check because we call this package in this line. So let's have a look at this package. Okay, the code is ready. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'm <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> this tool is also the reference of this code. It's from a guy from Geomodis, and you can download it for free and put it in SQL Developer, and then you can do it the same. <laughs> okay, so let's jump to this line. So 1,180. So this is, a C, this is a PLC code function that I call from my application code. And this code uh, calls another function from Oracle. So this is basically what you see here in the spec, in the PLC code spec thread. And the next one is in line 368. And this function is called, and right now it calls an external function. So it's not PLC code code by Oracle, it's still code, but it's wrapped in a C function, and so this is function name. So we are stuck right here because we, of course we can re try to reverse engineer the C function by Oracle and so on. And you can also check that this is a C function in the Oracle kernel code when you just look at the library. can see that this is a function, right? So you can try to reverse engineer it, <laughs> or you can say, okay, I, I have to write down where the memory leak is, and build a dedicated or a separated test case for it, and upload it uh, to my Oracle support, and say, here's the code, just run it, and you'll see the memory leak, because you have all the information already gathered and analyzed the stuff, but you cannot fix the problem with the C function, because it's a C function code, and yeah, you cannot do anything about it. And that's basically what we did uh, in, this, in this case for the client. And yeah, nothing really happened. <laughs> and he said, oh man, it's critical. We want to go live. And this is a broken application. And so we have to find a workaround. And as we already know, it's something about ACL. And we work with ACL. And it has something to do with the permission. So we played a little bit around with the stuff. And we find a workaround by not changing any code from Oracle or something like that, but just by doing this. You know? If you already if you know what the problem is, you can try to play around and try to find workarounds by yourself. If you don't get help immediately. Of course there is now a bug fix for it because Gara Vento uh, helped us to force it in Oracle organization and so on. But it took a long time. <laughs> Okay, 
So this is the same application code. The only thing that we did is change it how that we could do. Yeah. So that, that's the only thing that we did. And we tried it again. And no memory detect. I can prove you if you don't believe it. It's not a problem. Now let's do it and run it once again. So I change the application code and I run my Java program again. And now let's check the memory usage. So this is my new version. So you can already see the other is stable. There is no, almost no increasing memory. And if you also check the breakdown information with read dollar process memory details, Absolutely no memory allocation anymore about this ADS. So if you're running a database on 12.1.2 and you use HTTP requests or something like that, please apply the bug fix. I can also show you the number, but as I said, you can download the stuff and apply it on the database. So they don't give us memory leaks. So that's how you can drill down about PGA memory in Oracle code pretty quickly and all the efficient. Um, maybe you can fix it on your own, or you maybe have to open it, or you maybe find a rubber around by yourself by just playing a little bit around when you already know what the problem is. So thank you, and if you have any questions, please.